You guys asked, so I'm doing my best to deliver. Many of you said you wanted to see more throws incorporated into the biomechanical breakdown. And even though I'm not a judo guy, the Ponse Nagi that many of you know as an arm throw from Nogi Jiu Jitsu or for wrestling is the well-known throw that I'll be breaking down in this video. I'll start with the anatomy and the biomechanics of the Gi breakdown, and then I'll describe some of the nuances that arise in the Nogi environment. All right, so the first thing I want to say is obviously this is a breakdown in the Gi, uh, and this is also Shintaro Higashi's YouTube channel. Okay, so go check him out. His link is going to be in the description with the video. Uh, it seems like a pretty good uh, wealth of information. Even though I don't do judo, uh, it seems like this guy, uh, you know, he's got a school in New York City, so he's got some pretty good commentary and instructionals. So we're going to start from the upper body and move down into the lower body. So first, as he's setting up the throw, he's got a grip with his left hand and he's kind of holding it close to his chest, but the, the action that's really happening here to keep the guy really close to, or his opponent really close to his back is horizontal abduction at the shoulder and extension at the shoulder, which is done by the posterior delt, uh, some of the scapular muscles, and, and the lat is really what does the, uh, the shoulder extension. And this is happening isometrically. So he's not actually pulling him across, he's holding as his trunk does most of the work, but isometrically his shoulder is doing is is horizontal abduction and extension okay so as he gets his hips really low to create that fulcrum he forcefully flexes and rotates the trunk using muscles like the rectus abdominis uh, the internal and external obliques uh, and i think it's also worth mentioning if we move more inferiorly the glutes and the hamstrings are also being loaded eccentrically to hinge at the hips and create that fulcrum and finish the throw. So with the grip, the shoulder is horizontal, horizontally abducting and extending um, isometrically, although at the end of the throw, it could be concentrically. Uh, he's getting really, is getting his hips really uh, low, or getting his hips lower than his opponents while he forcefully flexes the trunk uh, using the rectus abdominis and internal external obliques for rotation that he does at the end. Uh, and eccentrically loading the glutes and the hamstrings to finish the throw. Now let's go and look at the other side. So you can't really get as, as good of an idea of the grip, but you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to the shoulder here. So notice, oh, excuse me. Yep, so notice here, when he comes down, he's not actually moving that shoulder, right? It's just maintaining isometrically that horizontal abduction and extension of the lat. If you have a problem kind of understanding that, let me know in the comments and we'll do a little bit more of a deep dive on that. Uh, but it should be pretty, pretty fairly straightforward. Again, his hips are nice and low to create that good fulcrum at the level of, the, of his opponent's hips. He forcefully flexes and rotates his trunk while he eccentrically loads his hamstrings and his glutes to create a nice stable base to finish the throw. And that is the Ponce Onagi in the Gi. Okay, so this is the same YouTube channel. Uh, this time Shintaro is in uh, the Nogi and his opponent's in the Gi, but this will still work for Nogi. It, it, I've never seen this throw before. Well, I, I've seen the throw before, I just didn't know it was called a Ponce Onagi, and I also didn't know it was the same uh, in, the, in the Nogi. Uh, but that just goes to show you how uh, uneducated I am in the, in the Judo world. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a pretty cool. This is a pretty cool throw that I, I wish I knew. I'm gonna uh, ask some of my judo buddies to kind of show me this, especially for nogi. Uh, but the, we'll, we'll basically just start with the foot. The foot takes an outside step, uh, and his opponent has this kind of lazy underhook. Uh, you can, obviously you can probably do it with a tight underhook. Uh, but you'll see that the grip, as he steps around, he actually starts to extend the hips, and in order to set up to to really forcefully flex this right shoulder into his armpit. He creates the angle, he extends his hips, and his back actually extends, but maybe not necessarily actively, he's just kind of letting his back extend uh, with gravity. Um, obviously, the glutes and the lumbar um, erector spinae are, are involved in this. Full spinal extension probably actually goes all the way up to the thoracic spine as well. So he takes the outside step with his uh, with his right foot, and as he uses his glutes and his spinal erectors to extend, he forcefully flexes that right arm right there into his armpit, and very much like the gi environment, this shoulder 
is, even though it's with the grip, it's also isometrically, horizontally adducting and flexing to try to maintain that nice grip. This is a lot more rotation at the trunk through the external and internal obliques, uh, unlike we saw mostly from the rectus abdominis trunk flexion. Now there is some flexion happening here, uh, but mostly rotation given the angle of his torso. And as he comes through, he then starts to flex really hard rectus abdominis, plants the other arm. I'm not sure, it probably isn't gonna be what's happening in full speed when he plants the other arm. He then rolls through using the same, really the same musculature, but he's, in, he's on the ground uh, to finish the throw. Uh, and let's see, whoops. So we'll go through it all at once. He takes the right leg, steps to the outside of the opponent, cutting the angle, extending his hips, extending his lumbar and thoracic spine, uh, using the glutes and the erector spinae of the, the lumbar and the thoracic spine. He then forcefully flexes his shoulder as he rotates or into the armpit of his opponent with, uh, you know, the, the main one here is gonna be the, the anterior delt and maybe some of the pec. Uh, and that's into the armpit as he rotates with his internal external obliques and flexes the spine, keeping his shoulder in an isometric horizontal abduction and uh, extension moment while he holds on to the grip, rolling his opponent over him, flexing his trunk, rectus abdominis again, and rolls forward. So that is the Ippon Seonagi uh, in the no-gi environment. So there you have it, Ippon Seonagi broken down biomechanically. Please continue to leave your ideas in the comments and I'll get to them as fast as I possibly can. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.